Circle centers for Cousins, a shot, and he scores. Dylan Cousins makes it 3-0 left. Lethbridge. Byron going to take it coast to coast on a backhand, scores! The blue line, Vandalies that effort, tip, scores! Carson Folk is Mr. Teddy Bear! Four, two, he scores! It's over! It's over! Game 7, overtime! Hi, hello, and welcome to the WHL Podcast. I am Zach Hodder, the Manager of Player Development for the Western Hockey League, and your host for this week's episode. This is our pre-draft primer. Last week we had the pros, this week we have the players. On the last episode, we talked with Ryan Kennedy from the Hockey News and Sam Cousin, wait for it, Tino from Sportsnet. This week we've got three defensemen, a goalie, and a forward who are going to talk to us about what they've been doing in preparation for the draft and how they've been preparing for the start of the season. The draft gets going on Tuesday, October 6th at 5 p.m. You can follow along on Sportsnet. They'll have round one Tuesday night and they'll have rounds two through seven starting Wednesday morning at 9.30 a.m. You can follow the Western Hockey League's draft tracker at our Twitter account at the WHL. Well, let's get this jam-packed episode started with our first guest. He is a Brandon Wheat Kings defenseman. He's currently ranked ninth among North American skaters and was originally selected 12th overall at the 2016 WHL Draft. He is, of course, Braden Schneider. Schneider has played 185 WHL games, scoring 16 goals, 72 assists for 88 points, and he's represented Team Canada at the Under-17 and Under-18 Championships, and last season was one of the final cuts from the World Junior Team. I caught up with him in Prince Albert. Let's jump into that interview. I am speaking with Brandon Wheat King's defenseman and top prospect for the NHL draft. He is at home in Prince Albert is where I caught up with him. Braden, how has your extended summer been? It's been good. The The first part of it was a little awkward with our uh, quarantine and stuff. But once we got through that, I've been training four or five days a week and on the ice as much as I can and been back and forth a little bit between PA and Brandon and it's been really good. So you just finished your third season with the Wheat Kings. By far your best season offensively, seven goals, 35 assists for 42 points. You're a guy that, you know, when I talk to scouts and I talk to people in the scouting community, they talk about how good of a defenseman you are, but obviously you've got that offensive side. So since you've been in the Western League, where do you think your game's grown the most? I, I would definitely say the the offensive side. I mean, and the defensive part of it as well. I My first two years in the league, I was really focused on making uh, – being able to be a guy who is trusted and in his own end and being able to make a good first pass and be good that way. And last year I kind of figured that out and I focused on being a little bit more offensive. And obviously that comes with confidence and opportunity. And I was fortunate enough to get that and have some pretty good teammates to play alongside too. And a new coach this year. You have Dave Lowry, a former, yeah. former head coach, went on to the NHL and now he's back. What was it like having Dave come into the team this year? It, it was, he was so, so good for us. I mean, Everything he says, it, it carries a lot of weight, and he's a guy that's very respected, obviously. And, I mean, yeah, he helped every guy on our team a lot. He made us make sure we were playing as a team before ourselves. And, and yeah, when we gelled together, I thought he was a big reason of it. Obviously, the NHL draft coming up very quickly here. How have you been preparing, and, and what do you think or what do you expect is going to happen on Tuesday for yourself? I honestly have, I have no idea. I, I know I'm going to have my, my family and my, my billets in town and, and my girlfriend as well. And we're going to be here and hoping for the best. So not sure what's going to happen, but it'll be a, a great day nonetheless. When you look at yourself and you look at the way that, that you play the game, how would you describe who you are to somebody that's never seen you play? I, I would describe myself as a, a two-way defenseman who takes, who makes a good first pass, skates well, and, and joins the rush when he can with my skating. I, I know I, I take a lot of pride, like I said earlier, in my D zone, and I think that's where I'm most prominent, and I love to be hard to play against and physical as well. So I'd say a hard-hitting two-way defenseman. And if there's one guy in the NHL right now that you like to watch or you've tried to emulate your game after, who would that player be? I would say two guys, Shea Weber and Alex Petrangelo would be the two guys who are, that I, I love to watch and I, I try to model my game after. And obviously both bigger guys love playing hard in the D zone, but if they get the opportunity, they, they, they take it. And obviously for both of them, there's differences. We're lacking the shot that Weber has and Petrangelo is a little smoother, but we're working on it. That's the thing. It's just about constantly getting better, working on your game. And you talk about those two players, both of them have played for Team Canada at the World Junior, the World Cups and the Olympics. Uh, yourself, you almost made the World Junior team last year and you're going to have that opportunity again this season. 
you know, what, uh, what is it like going to a world junior camp and, and how competitive is it? And, and just kind of describe the experience and what it's been like for you. Yeah. Last year was, it was a super good experience. Got to meet a, I was a younger guy there at the time. So I got to meet a lot of great older hockey players and guys my age as well. And yeah, it, it's super fun hockey. It's, it's a different level than junior. And it, it's a, it's a, one of the biggest stages at this caliber of hockey. So it's, it's a great experience to have the opportunity and I'm excited for uh, another chance at it again. I don't want you to look too far ahead because Tuesday is a big day for yourself, your family and, and for, for the Wheat Kings and all your teammates. But as you look past the NHL draft and getting back to playing hockey, what are you most looking forward to once we're able to get the season started? Yeah, I think I'm just most most looking forward to yeah, getting back with my teammates and, and looking forward to have a, a, a great year. I think uh, especially this year, I think we have a pretty pretty good team and I'm excited for it and I can't wait to get back at it. You're playing in Brandon. This was the first season where the Winnipeg Ice came into the league. When you look at the Wheat Kings, who do you think your biggest rival is? And do you think that that rivalry with the Ice is going to continue to pick up because they are going to be a very good team as well next year? Yeah, I, I would for sure say the Ice. And it's only a year old, but it we had some heavy battles last year and some a lot of competitive games. So it was fun last year, and I'm sure it's going to get even more fun as the years go on. Yeah, a ton of talent on that Winnipeg Ice team, just like with you guys. And when you talk about talent in the Western Hockey League, I mean, you look at Leon Dreisaitl, Braden Point, Matt Barzell. These are all guys that have played there. But who's been the toughest player for you to play against? To play against, I, I always, I don't go far down the road here, but it's a ways away in the, in the actual league. But I, I, Connor Zary, a guy like that, I grew up playing against him a ton. He was with Saskatoon and here while I was with PA. And he's always been a guy that's given me giving me some trouble he's so smart and shifty with the puck and knows how to use everyone around him really well and, and I, I, it's tough to isolate him out I like I'd like to take him out with a, a hitter here and there but he's he's slippery yeah it's a good thing he's playing in the BC division then and he's also a guy that uh, is likely to hear his name called very early in the draft very cool story for for both your families so Braden yeah. thank you so much for taking time out of your day I know you're very busy right now best of luck on Tuesday and as we get the season going thank you so much for having me Thank you to Braden for taking time out of his day to talk with us. Up next, we've got Gage Gonsalves, the Everett Silvertips forward and Mission BC native, who in his Twitter bio says that Mission BC is the greatest city in British Columbia. I vehemently disagree, but what you can't disagree with is the season that he had last year. After scoring only one goal in his first Western Hockey League season, he posted 33 goals last season to go along with 38 assists for 71 points. Taylor Roca, the Western Hockey League's Director of Communications, caught up with Gage at his home in beautiful Mission, BC. I'm joined by Gage Gonsalves of the Everett Silvertips. He is a highly touted prospect heading into the 2020 NHL Draft, which is coming up here on Tuesday, October 6th. Gage, how are you doing today? Really good. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me here. Appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, I know it's a busy time of year and a little bit of a strange year. We're finally looking at the NHL draft getting underway. It's October, which typically this is a June event that everybody looks forward to, but COVID-19 had different plans for everybody. So now that the big day is, you know, right around the corner here, it's finally upon us. How exciting is that for you? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been really tough to kind of see it get pushed back for so far and that kind of thing. But uh, now that it's right around the corner here, me and my family are very excited. Uh, obviously, we're all going to be sitting at home watching it, and uh, hopefully uh, I get to hear my name called. Well, you had an incredible breakout year with the Everett Silver Tips, and you know what better year to do it than in your NHL draft year. Uh, 71 points in 60 games. Uh, you know, you were a, a noticeable presence out there for a Silver Tips team that was dominant within the U.S. division once again. You know, you look back on the year that was, even though it might feel like forever ago, you know, what, what led to the success for you on the ice? Uh, I think it really started with my offseason uh, the past year. Kind of like when we lost to Spokane in my 17-year-old year, I got talked to by a couple guys. They're like, you just keep working, you keep plunging away, you have the hockey IQ, everything will, everything will start coming around once you kind of build that uh, physical assets and stuff like that. So I came in with a little bit more of a confidence and a better attitude with my off-season training, put on some weight and some strength. And then, yeah, I came in. I, I wanted to be the guy. I wanted to be power play one, penalty kill one. D zone with 30 seconds left, I wanted to be taking that face off. So I think kind of just that uh, that mindset really helped me get over that hump into the next level, kind of into the, to the top six of uh, our lineup. Was there a moment in the season 
when it like when it clicked for you and you realized, hey, my off season paid off and I'm actually getting these opportunities that I, I really wanted to see? Uh, I think it was our second or first game against Victoria. I was it was me, Kindop and Good, I think, and I think I was playing the wing that game or something, but just right off the bat you could see that I was had a little bit of a quicker step. I I was reading plays quicker. Everything was kind of coming together. And playing with a guy like Bryce Kindop, especially last year in Connor Dewar, I watched a lot of things that they did, especially during the playoffs and just how they presented themselves towards every game. Yeah, I think after that, I think it was like a 4.9. We had a, we all had a great game. But I think after that, my confidence grew and I doubt we could do some damage in the league. You mentioned Bryce Kindop, uh, your captain. He signed a pro contract as an overage player last year. You know, how how much did you learn from a, a veteran guy like that that, uh, you know, has seen the league over a number of years and, and learned a lot along the way himself? Uh, you know, what sort of knowledge did he impart upon you along the way? He wasn't too, he wasn't really too flashy in anything he did. He never was a huge talker in the room. He never really wanted to come in, was just doing this, like, hyping up the boys or anything like that. He really just came in with a work professional attitude. Every day he got better. And uh, the amount of stuff I had to watch him take, especially he's going up against top D pairs everywhere he goes. He's getting hacks. He's getting, he's getting lips from other team. The stuff he had to deal with, and he really took it well. He just brushed it off his shoulder. He didn't let it get to him. And I think that's what I'm going to take the most from, uh, from Bryce, just the way he carried himself on the ice with kind of brushing everything off and just plunging through everything. All right, I got to ask you about this. December 2019, um, I think everybody in the hockey world saw the goal that you scored against the Spokane Chiefs. You know, for people out there who didn't see it, it was a shootout. Maybe you can take me through it. So me and Campbell are actually pretty good buddies uh, back home. He trains out here uh, near me and stuff like that. So we've known each other for a couple of years. My go-to kind of move is low blocker. So I thought if I can come down that right side and fake low blocker and then pull it back, maybe I can open them up or maybe I'll just get them leaning or something like that. And then I did practice that that move a couple of times in practice on a, on the goalies and stuff and pregame and stuff. So it was working and uh, I just thought, why not try it? He bit on it hard and yeah, it just slid in. It's a goal that was made famous by Peter Forsberg way back in the day. And yeah. um, you don't see it all that often anymore. So like it's uh, it takes a fair bit of courage to go in on a goalie in a shootout nonetheless and do something like that. How many times have you worked on that in practice? How long did it take for you to perfect that? Because honestly, it looked flawless from somebody watching outside of the building. Well, I actually got really good use of it was when I had a concussion, actually, at the start, kind of like a week before that game. And I got to, was staying home and it was just me and the goalie and we did some shootouts to end the practice and it worked once or twice then. And then I tried it in the pregame skate before and it worked again. So I, I knew that that was kind of my, my go-to move, especially against Campbell. I know how he likes my low blocker. So I just tried to read what he, hopefully he was thinking I was going to go low blocker and I did. You pulled it off. It was tremendous. Um, the goal went viral throughout the hockey world. I think the NHL picked it up, Sports Center, pretty much everywhere you went the next day in the world of hockey, you saw that goal. So what kind of feedback did you get from uh, your buddies? Obviously, I, you know, I'm assuming Campbell had something to say about it, but you know, did you, uh, was the phone blowing up the next day? Yeah, I know it was right before the Christmas break too. So I kind of got to go home like three or four days later. And yeah, all my buddies from school and stuff like that were like, hey, we saw you on Sports Center last night and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, it was really cool for, for them to see it and for me to be there. And yeah, it was definitely something that I never expected would happen. But yeah, I'm very grateful. And it was, yeah, it was, it was awesome. We'll bring it back to the NHL draft because that's what we're here to talk about. You know, part of that whole process, you go through meetings with teams, you're chatting with scouts, uh, you're doing that whole thing in the lead up to the draft. So, you know, what, uh, what kind of questions did NHL scouts or management maybe ask you about, you know, a pretty bold play like that? They said kind of the same thing that you said. It, it takes a lot of courage. And they were asking me if it was kind of a, a read and react player, if I, I had it set in stone as soon as I touched it. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I touched that puck, I kind of had it set in stone. So they liked that I showed off the skill set and uh, that I kind of had uh, the courage and to try that and it ended up working out. So I want to chat with you a little bit about your summer here. And obviously, like we've talked about already, it's been a bit of a different year, to say the least. But you get the opportunity to go and you know participate with Hockey Canada in, in part of the World Junior Championship development process. You know, when you got that call, that you were going to get to participate in those summer sessions. Uh, how exciting was that for you? 
I was ecstatic. Obviously, it's Hockey Canada. It's, it's the best program in the world when it comes to Canadian hockey. So I was, I was through the roof and just to work with, with all those great players and the great coaching staff and all the guest speakers that we had uh, for that week. And yeah, just learning about the way they play and the way they do things. It was, it was the best experience I could ever ask for. What, uh, you know, what was the experience like? What sort of stuff did they run you through and, and what sort of lessons do you hope to have uh, taken away from it? Yeah, so uh, obviously it was really different with the with the Zoom calls for the the hours of the day and stuff like that. But yeah, we had some uh, we got to have some one on one meetings with the coaching staff, the equipment and health and all that. And then uh, we just watched some video on how they would like to play that kind of thing. And then other than that, it was mostly just team building, uh, trying to get to know the guys better. Obviously, you see all these great players in so many different leagues, like Byfield and all those others. It was just crazy to kind of meet them and just kind of make a connection with them. So the World Junior Championship this year is scheduled to be on Canadian soil right here at home. It's in Edmonton. You know, what sort of mindset are you trying to get yourself in, you know, to give yourself a shot to, you know, have an opportunity to make that Canadian team here come December? Yeah, I think I, uh, I just got to keep doing what I do and keep working out, trying to get bigger and stronger and uh, just trying to prove everybody wrong. And I think I've been a little bit of an underdog my, my whole hockey career here. So uh, right now it's worked out, the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm not trying to, trying to change a whole lot of my game or try and do anything too, uh, too crazy right now. I think that it's been working out for me so far. So I'll just keep doing that. Let's shift gears here for a second. You know, let's, let's say you're talking to someone who is, they've never watched Gage Gonsalves take a shift in his life. How would you describe yourself as a hockey player to someone that's never seen you on the ice? I think I'm a high IQ centerman. I think my vision and just kind of like my hockey knowledge is definitely the top parts of my game. I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of skill, a lot of playmaking out of me, but uh, you're also going to get a, a physical aspect and kind of a, kind of a chip on the shoulder uh, attitude and kind of play out there. We've seen the skill. We've talked about the skill, um, at least in that one particular moment back in December. You know, you talk about the physical side of the game. We've seen hockey evolve over the years. It's become much more about speed and skill. How important is it to still maintain a certain physical aspect to the game out there? Uh, I think it's huge. I think especially on uh, the offensive uh, end, obviously, I think it's like we always talk about Bound and Everett kind of nose break alley, trying to get to that uh, middle crease and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, that's where I scored a lot of my goals this year was getting to the net, rebounds, little tips and stuff like that. So, yeah, if you watch the NHL, like guys like Joe Pavelski and stuff, they're always scoring big goals from in the paint. So, I just try and do that. You bring up Joe Pavelski. That leads me nicely into my next question here. Who out there, uh, whether it's an NHL player or some, maybe a different pro athlete, but, you know, who out there do you sort of idolize that you try to, you know, model yourself after as, as you look to continue developing? Uh, one guy I always really looked up to was uh, Jane Schwartz. I know he's a winger and stuff like that, but I, I had the honor to meet him when I was 12 or 13 years old. So, yeah, ever since kind of that day where I got to meet him, we had dinner with him. He was friends with my neighbors at the time. So got to meet him, kind of pick his brain about stuff. So ever since then, I've kept a really close eye on him. And just, yeah, he's full of skill, uh, absolutely good with the puck, but he still has that grit to him where he can get to the net and make hits, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think he, I think if I can model my game after him, it wouldn't be too bad of a thing. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't be too bad of a thing. Jane, Jane's done okay for himself at the NHL level, I would say. <laughs> yeah, not bad at all. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I'll wrap it up here pretty quick, but the first round of the NHL draft is on Tuesday rounds two through seven. They go on Wednesday here. Uh, what kind of plans do you have for uh, the next two days of the NHL draft? And uh, you know, who are you looking forward to spending time with? Uh, my family, obviously uh, my parents and my sister, uh, they've been awesome for me. My parents have sacrificed absolutely everything for me to play hockey. So yeah, I can't thank them enough. It'll be nice to have my sister home and then, my grandpa will be coming over and my uncle and my auntie. So yeah, it'll just be great to have them uh, all near me knowing how much they've sacrificed and how much time and effort they've put into come watching me paying for everything. So yeah, it'll be a great moment for uh, the whole family. Right on Gage. Well, like I said, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, you know, congratulations on a tremendous season that was, albeit cut short for, uh, for all of us. Uh, you know, wish you the best of luck on Tuesday and Wednesday here and, Looking forward to seeing you back on the ice in Everett one day soon. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. 
Thanks to Gage and his family for setting that one up and for Taylor for filling in and doing a much better job than me. Up next, we've got Caden Dooley from the Prince Albert Raiders. Caden is currently ranked eighth among North American skaters, the highest projected player in the Western Hockey League, and was the first overall pick in the 2017 WHL Draft. He's looking to follow in the footsteps of his brother, Brendan, who was selected third overall in the Western Hockey League draft and 51st overall in the NHL draft by the Buffalo Sabres. Caden has played 137 Western Hockey League games, registering 14 goals and 44 assists for 58 points and won the 2019 WHL Championship with the Raiders. I am talking right now with Caden Gooley at his home in Sherwood Park. Caden, how has this extended summer and this unique offseason been for yourself? Yeah, I think I think we're all ready to get back into action here, and um, I think we we're kind of we're kind of uh, tired of practices and, uh, and all that. I think we want to get some games going, so I, I think we're all just kind of sitting on the edge of our seats, waiting for uh, for us to go back to to the dub and uh, get some games going again. So obviously, a big week coming up for yourself the NHL draft. What has the process been like going through the interviews and talking with teams in the COVID-19 era? It's been different for sure. I think, I think everybody would have enjoyed going to the combine and uh, getting to do it the traditional way. But I think us talking on zoom calls, it's pretty similar to what they would ask us at the combine. So um, you still treat it like that. You still treat it like a very professional uh, interview and don't treat it like anything different. You're still talking NHL team. So you gotta, gotta be there and gotta be engaged. So they, uh, they've, they've been good. And anytime you talk to a team, it's an honor and, uh, and a privilege. So it's been good so far. Well, you also have, uh, luckily, a brother who's already gone through the process. He's played some games in the NHL. Have you been able to lean on Brendan at all to help you through this process and just prepare you for what's ahead? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've, I've been there and been watching him ever since he was, he was a kid. He's the reason I started playing hockey and just getting to see, go, see him go through this journey and see him go through all the ups and the downs and all that stuff, everything that comes with hockey, it's, it's stressful. So he, he's been huge for me and he tells me a lot. He, he gives me great advice and just tells me to be myself with all the teams and um, they'll pick me for, for the type of person I am. So, you know, he, he's been a huge part for me and he's, uh, he's the reason I'm here today. So. Well, you have a somewhat of a unique story in the fact that you're drafted first overall in the Western Hockey League and your first year in the league, you end up being on a team that wins the championship. Most of the time, guys that get drafted first overall are going to a team that's in a rebuild. What was that first year like for you? You come on to a very old, a veteran team that's been together for a long time. And how did you establish yourself and then ultimately earn the, the respect and the trust of Mark Habscheid? Yeah, I, I think it was obviously when you're looking back on it or – or when you're in the moment, um, you want to be on the ice as much as you can. Any kid, any hockey player wants to be on the ice all the time and be that guy, be that defenseman, whatever. So obviously at times it was tough, especially being a high pick. You, you feel like sometimes you maybe should be getting more ice. But um, looking back on it now, I don't think I'd be here without going through all that and learning from all the older guys, learning from the coaches. Our whole decor there was awesome to me and they were all awesome for me. I got to watch them and they've all been in the league for three or four years already. So uh, looking back on it now, I, I don't think I'd be here today without that and going in my 17 year old year I was so much more hungry and eager to get those minutes I wanted to be the guy I wanted to to be the the number one guy that our coaches we were looking at and trusting to to be out there the last two minutes so I think that experience really helped me out and I think it was really good for me to go through that looking at your game and how it's developed over the past two seasons where do you think you've seen the biggest growth um, I think my defensive game has been big, the biggest thing going into to PA when I was 16 I was more of an offensive minded defenseman I wouldn't say it was uh, I was offensively only I think I had a little bit of both uh, I think I just was more focused on offense at that time and I, I really was getting uh, getting taught defense when I was 16 coaches were really harping on me to to stay back and focus on that and then join the rush or, or focus on offense after that so yeah I think my defensive game has just improved a lot and uh, my physicality and I think just just my eagerness on the ice has, has also took a step from from that so I think just my defensive game mostly which is pretty important considering you do play defense. As we talked about earlier, you've gone through the Zoom process, uh, talking to these NHL teams, talking with general managers, directors of scouting, hockey operations, and famously the NHL, the, the NBA, and the NFL at these combines, they often ask players questions to kind of set them off edge or kind of get them off their game and off their script. Did you have a, an experience like that in any of your meetings? Yeah, I'm not going to say with who or what team, but there's a couple questions where I think they, they try to, 
rile you up and see your response, see how you react to it. So yeah, there's been a few times when, when teams ask you questions and um, you get kind of fired up and you just have to give a good answer at that point and kind of, kind of speak your mind, I guess, without trying to be rude to anybody or hurt anyone's feelings. So um, that's all part of the process and I just want to see how you answer. Uh, you're a better man than me. I would have said my internet cut out and threw some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, for, for fans that haven't seen you play before, for the team and the fans of the team that you end up ultimately getting drafted to, can you describe the type of player that you are and the type of player that they could expect to see? I think they expect uh, a defensive first D-man. I think my offensive, my offense is still there. I don't think, uh, I think sometimes people might look past that. I think, uh, but I definitely take care of my defensive zone first. Like you said, I, I am a defenseman. Um, that's something that's taken care of first. So I think I'm just a solid 2 AD D-man. Very physical, likes to take the body, likes to make it hard on the other team's best players and jumps up on the rush. Very good skater, good shot, gets shots through. So just all, the, all those things I think is uh, what, what team or what fans of, of whatever team um, would see for me. You took a huge step this year uh, watching you play. It was beyond impressive the fact that you were a 17-year-old player in the Western Hockey League playing the minutes that you were playing, the way that you played them. But what are you most looking forward to about getting back on the ice next season? Working towards another championship. I think that's everybody's uh, everybody's goal. I think our team, again, has another good chance. I think a lot of people were surprised with us last year. I think we were supposed to be more of a middle-of-the-pack team, and I think we exceeded expectations. I thought we did really, really well, and I think we're just pretty getting older by, by now, and I think this next year we'll have a chance to, to go for another run. So um, I think I'm more, more most excited for that and just obviously see the guys again and um, get, back in, uh, get back in the dressing room and just kind of be more normal and get back to VA. I'm excited for all that. So um, hopefully it, uh, it end up, ends up coming up soon. Well, Caden, thank you so much for taking time out of your night today. Best of luck to you and your family as you guys prepare for next week. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you to Caden, who has a very busy schedule right now, and I'm sure he's done about 12,000 Zoom calls at this point. Our next guest is the only goaltender on this week's show. That's Dylan Grand of the Kamloops Blazers. Grand, who calls Langford, BC home, just finished his second season in the WHL and his first as a starting goaltender. The 2020 WHL Academic Player of the Year was as good on the ice as he was off it, posting 28 wins to go along with a 221 goals against and a 921 save percentage. I'm speaking with Kamloops Blazers goaltender, Dylan Grant. He is in Langford at home, getting ready for the start of the season, but more importantly for the NHL draft. Dylan, how has your extended summer been? Uh, it's been good. Um, I think being in Victoria, uh, we've been pretty lucky here. Um, that COVID hasn't hit us too hard. So uh, it's been a fairly normal off season and definitely enjoying my time and, and making the most of it. A fairly normal off season. You're the first person that's told me that so far, but uh, uh, you're a little different in the fact that this past season you won the academic or this classic player of the year at the Western Hockey League. And, you know, what do you think drives you to be such a good student and excel in the classroom just like you do on the ice? Um, I'm not really too sure. I think always in school, I've just held my standards high and, you know, I've kind of lived by the motto of like, if you're going to do it, you might as well as, as try hard and do it the best you can. So, that's just kind of the attitude you have. And honestly, if you just stay on top of your work, it's, it's not too difficult. So, uh, you know, as somebody who's already gone through high school and graduated, uh, you know, I felt I was on top of my work the whole time and, you know, I didn't have the marks that you did. That's for sure. You've just finished your second year in the Western Hockey League. You had a tremendous season, 221 goals against, 921 save percentage, 28 wins and four shutouts. And you're only 17 years old. Where, where do you think you see your game evolving and, and where do you think you've grown the most since you entered the Western Hockey League? In the evolving aspect, I'm not really too sure. I think uh, I just try to keep it simple and take it one day at a time and, and try to get better each day. So um, we'll see that where that ends up. Uh, I'm not really focusing on anything too specific. Uh, I just want to get better and continue to give my team a chance to win each night. And as for, you know, what I've kind of learned the most through my years, I think it's just through the experience and, and learning, um, you know, what the game's like as you move up and, and as the guys get bigger and stuff like that, it's important to kind of um, gain that maturity and understand the game a little bit more. And then um, hopefully in the next few years, as I keep moving up, you know, I'll get that opportunity again. Last season, near the end, you were thrust into the starting position after uh, Dylan Ferguson went down with an injury and you, you shined. And your biggest game was the tiebreak game against the Kelowna Rockets. What was that like for you as a 16-year-old goalie preparing for a sudden death game to determine the rest of your season? 
it was honestly pretty normal. I think, you know, we played a lot of games in, in a lot of days right before that. So um, it just felt like a, another part of that stretch. And, um, you know, I wasn't really thinking uh, too much about what the moment was. I was just trying to trying to go in there and help my team win. And, you know, luckily we were able to do that. So that's pretty much it. Oh, man, I wish I was as cool as you were when I played. Oh, my goodness. If I had your mindset, I'd still probably be here. But, you know, you're going to be in a unique – or not a unique, but a new position for yourself next year. You're going to be an 18-year-old goaltender. You have a 16-year-old goalie coming in by the name of Dylan Ernst, and you're going to be more in a, a mentorship. Uh, this is how you need to do things to have success in this league. Uh, what was it like learning from Dylan Ferguson and then Connor Ingram? I mean, Kamloops is slowly becoming a, a goaltending hotbed in the Western Hockey League. Yeah, playing with Fergie was was huge for me and my development. He taught me a lot, you know, just watching him and in practice and in games and how he carries himself was was huge to see, uh, you know, a guy like that, 20 years old, sign in the NHL. Um, Great guy to learn from, super nice guy to me, Um, you know, really took me under his wing and, you know, I really appreciate him for that. And yeah, as for Connor Ingram, I fortunately never got the chance to, to be on the ice with him, but um, you know, I've had a couple conversations with me and he kind of gives me advice too. So, um, yeah, like you said, there's been some great goalies through, through Kamloops in the past few years. And I'm really lucky to have been able to learn from each of them. As you get ready here for the NHL draft, what has the process been like on these Zoom calls and, you know, working with, with your agent, I'm sure, and the team setting all these up? repetitive questions like you're getting here today with myself have you had any fun moments or have there been any questions that you've been asked that uh, come out of left field and really knocked you off your game I've actually gotten this question you know like your question a couple of times and honestly I haven't really had any wacky questions or anything out of the of the ordinary it's been pretty normal so the process has been good and talking to quite a bit of teams but uh, surprisingly no I haven't gotten a weird question yet for the team that does end up drafting you in that fan base, what can they expect? What type of player are you and what, and what type of goalie are you going to be for their team in the future? I think I'm just a steady goalie. Um, I pride myself on my consistency. I think I'm a reactionary goalie and uh, I track the puck well and I use my skating ability uh, to my advantage and uh, just a steady goalie and consistent and uh, give the team a chance to win every night. When you look at the Western Hockey League and, and the players that are in it, who is the most difficult player for you to prepare to play against? There's not really anyone particular. They usually, I'm not really thinking about individuals I'm up going up against. I'm usually thinking of, you know, the team we're playing. But um, if I had to choose someone who gives me some trouble sometimes, it'd probably have to be uh, Seth Jarvis. I've got to know him pretty well over some experiences with Team Canada and, and the top prospects game as well. And his shot's pretty good, so it gives me trouble. I'll let you know that uh, one of the other defensemen, I won't say who from our league, said that Connor Zary was the most difficult player to play against. So, you know, you got one of the top goalies and one of the top forwards looking ahead to next season. You guys are putting together, you know, quite a good team there, a team that most people think have a chance to compete for the Memorial Cup. So what are you looking forward most to next season? Looking forward to getting things going, uh, being back with the guys and, you know, gelling together and, and building a, you know, a contending team. I think it's going to be a super fun year and, you know, we're all going to get great experience and, and learn a lot. And I just can't wait to get back with the guys and, um, you know, try to compete for a championship. You know, looking forward to next season, you have the same coach again. You know, you've had two coaches in two years. You've got Sean Cluson coming, who came over from the mess and had Tigers, along with his twin brother, Corey, who was a former NHL head coach, as well as Daryl Sador. How valuable is it to have those types of coaches helping you guys with such a good team competing potentially again for a Western Hockey League championship? Oh, I think it's huge right away. When, when Sean came in, you could just tell the impact that he had on our group and looking back, he's a huge part of the success we had last year. Same thing with, with Corey as well. He came in kind of, kind of midway through the year and, you know, he really, really helped us. He's super structured coach and um, you know, they're both great guys and, you can talk to them about anything. So um, their approach to the game and, and the way that they handled our team um, was un- unbelievable. And, you know, we're super fortunate to have those two guys behind the bench. Yeah, they're tremendous coaches. Sean's actually slowly climbing his way up the all-time wins list in the Western Hockey League. He's well on his way to surpassing uh, Don Hay there. So another Camelot Blazers coach. But Dylan, thank you again so much. Best of luck to yourself and your family on Tuesday. And I hope that we're able to get back and get this season going as quick as we can. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.
Dylan Grant certainly seems like the most composed 17 year old I've ever talked to. Thank you to him for taking time out of his day and his busy schedule as he prepares for the NHL draft to talk with me. Up next and our last guest had one of the best and biggest breakouts of this past WHL season. That's Alex Cotton of the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Cotton was originally selected 99th overall at the 2016 WHL Draft and exploded offensively this year, potting 20 goals, adding 47 assists, and led all WHL defensemen with 67 points. A quick little fun fact is Cotton and Gage Gonsalves both played on the U15 AAA team at Yale Hockey Academy during the 2015-16 season. I'm here with Alex Cotton, Lethbridge Hurricanes defenseman. I caught up with him in Langley, BC, where he's from. Alex, how's your summer been, and um, what have you been up to? Been kind of the same, all just a lot of training, a lot of getting ready, preparing myself for the draft and for next season. I wouldn't. I think it's a little bit too long the wait. I'm not really too keen on that, but it's been it's been pretty good overall. Big week coming up for yourself here with the NHL draft. Uh, you know, you're projected to be a mid-round pick coming out of the Lethbridge Hurricanes after the big year you had. What's that process been like? And, and you know, what, what have the conversations been like with yourself and the NHL teams? Yeah, obviously, yeah, I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been super fun. Me living with Cuz last year, being my bailout brother, I got a little bit of a glimpse of how it all works. He really helped me this year with all those meetings and stuff like that. It's been good. I think teams... They do say a lot of the same stuff, mostly about my defensive game. And I know that that's the thing I need to work on. And that's the thing that I'm going to try and work on the most coming in the coming years. Well, I mean, you had an incredible season last year. You led all Western Hockey League defensemen in points, 20 goals, 47 assists. I mean, just, just a really 67 points. An incredible year for a defenseman to have. Thank and you. it's even more uh, impressive the fact that the year before, your first year in the league, you had 11 points. So coming into last season, what changed? Where did you find the confidence and, and what really clicked for you? Kind of at the end of my 17-year-old year, it was a kind of a little boost for me. I think the playoffs was where I stood out a little bit. And then kind of going into this year, I worked out twice, skated every day um, that whole summer. So I was in pretty good shape. And I kind of just, guys leaving, I guess, getting my opportunity this year. And I got it and I kind of just ran with it. And I guess it just turned out uh, the, way it, the way it did. Well, one of the guys on your team uh, whose haircut you seem to be mirroring right now, uh, <laughs> Kalen Addison, uh, you know, what's it like playing with him and what was it like learning from him? I'm sure he was a great help for you on the offensive side. Yeah, he was. He is kind of a guy that I really modeled my game after a little bit. He's my he's one of my best friends and he helped me throughout the whole process this year too. I'm just trying to make me not really think about the draft too much and all that stuff. Just kind of focus on what I need to focus on. But yeah, he's my best friend and he, he helped me a lot. And yeah, he's playing with him is I get a little bit of an extra jolt of energy when I play with him. It's always fun when I'm on the ice. When you just when you think about the way you play, you talked about how you know your biggest area of improvement moving forward is going to be the defensive side of the puck. If for somebody who's never seen you play before, describe the type of player that you are. I think I'm an offensive defenseman that really it's really good at reading plays and creating chances for their teammates. And I think also going along with that, I think I'm pretty decent at putting the puck in the net. And yeah, continuing on the defense, I know that that's the thing I need to work on. And I think me improving that's only going to make me better. So. But big difference for you this past season, when you have success at any level, you're going to get more ice time. And you're also going to be yeah. playing against more difficult competition. Mm -hmm. So for yourself, what was it like when, you know, last your first year in the Western League, where I'm sure you probably weren't being line matched against some of the top players to this year, where you definitely were being line matched against the other team's top players. And how did you prepare for that uh, throughout the season? At the start, I had, like, I needed a little bit of getting used to. I just haven't really done that my in my junior career. But yeah, it was a little different, but I guess throughout the year, I kind of got used to it and it was good. It was, I had a lot of fun. I think playing against those top guys and challenging yourself every day is, is what makes the game fun. Other than that, it was, it was, it was fun. So piggybacking off that, who was the hardest player to play against this past season? I'd say a guy like James Hamlin, mostly just because of his speed and skill, I think. And he's not afraid to, like, he's not afraid to run you through the wall either. Um, I think he was probably, for me, the toughest guy that I played against this year. But obviously, there's so many players in that league that, that are tough to play against. I mean, I couldn't imagine playing against someone like Cuz or, or Addy, so... I was just about to say, you got one of the best players in the league on your team. I'm sure it helps going against him every single day in practice. Um, yeah. 
as well as having the team that you guys have this past season, as you get ready for next year, you know, what are your expectations heading into, you know, this very unique and, and we're never going to see it again, probably season that's coming up. Yeah. Um, I think last year, a lot of people had a little bit like no one really knew if cuz was coming back or what was going on there. And our, our team was a little doubted, I think. Um, and I think this year it's going to be almost the same thing. We're losing those top two guys. And uh, I think we're, our team's going to have a little bit of doubt, but I think during the year moving forward, we'll just kind of the same as last year, just prove everyone wrong. And that's kind of my expectation for this year. So Tuesday, Wednesday is the NHL draft. What do you and your family have planned for draft day? On Wednesday, I think my family's just coming over, going over to my, um, my brother's house and it's just me and my family. We're just going to watch and I guess just wait and see what happens, have a good breakfast and stuff like that. So nothing too special, just spending it with my family, the people that got me to where I am today. Alex, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. Uh, all the best in the coming days here as you get prepared you. for the draft. And uh, I'm rooting for you. I hope, that, uh, hope that you hear your name earlier than you expect. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it for this week's episode. A big thank you to Caden Gooley, Braden Schneider, Alex Cotton, Gage Gonsalves, and of course, our goaltender, Dylan Grant. And best of luck to every single player who is eligible to be drafted at this year's NHL Draft. Remember, it is one day in your development and your evaluation process it does not determine the type of player that you are. Again, you can follow all the draft coverage on Sportsnet starting Tuesday night at 5 o'clock Mountain, and again rounds 2 through 7 on Wednesday morning starting at 9.30 a.m. You can also follow along on the Western Hockey League's Twitter account at the WHL with our very own draft tracker. I'm Zach Hotter. You can follow me on Twitter at Zach hotter i hope you have a great week and i hope to see you again next wednesday